relaunch. Greetings, and this is the day that the Lord has made. We are excited that you join us in this service today online to hear from God's word and to be encouraged as you continue to grow and follow Christ in your life. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine, a pastor in the city here, gave me an invitation to go fishing with him. So he woke me up very early in the morning, 5 a.m., for us to take on this trip. We arrived at uh, the point where we were going to fish, but suddenly we started fishing. There were a number of people around doing their thing. We tried it all morning, and Fortunately, as for me, I couldn't catch any fish on that day, even when I woke up very early in the morning. And my friend caught a number of fish, and on my way home, I started thinking how it must have felt for Peter trying to fish all night. It was frustrating for me for a few hours. For Peter, it was a lot worse. Simon is a fisherman whose name is changed to Peter after him encountering Jesus and being transformed by him. He was a great fisherman who understood the rules and the principles of the fishing business. He engaged in this business as his lifestyle. I actually assume that Peter was always on the fishing ground using this business to pay his taxes, using the business to feed his family and fishing in order to pay his tithes. This particular moment, the Bible says that Peter had fished all night and had caught nothing. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to verses 7. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, which is also known as the Sea of Galilee, people were crowding around him and listening to the word. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to push him a little Father of the shore. Then he sat down and told the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled their boat so fast fool that they began to sink. This morning, as I was uh, thinking about this, I realized there are a number of things that we can share from this passage, but today we will focus on a few of them. The Bible says in verses 1 and verses 2 that meanwhile as Jesus was preaching, Many people were pushing on close to him. They were drawing closer to him to hear as he was preaching the gospel. And around this time at the edge of the water, there were two boats empty, ready to be used. And the fishermen were washing their nets. At this particular moment, Jesus decides to interrupt Peter by demanding or asking, Asking for his boat. And at this time, Jesus uses Peter's boat as a pulpit as he was preaching at the edge of the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee, ladies and gentlemen, is the largest sea, is the largest freshwater lake in the, in the country of Israel. But it is also the lowest point in Israel. Jesus chooses the Sea of Galilee as a place where to launch his earthly ministry. As a matter of fact, 18 of the 33 miracles performed 
performed by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, were performed right around the Sea of Galilee. He chooses the edge of the sea to reveal his glory. It is at the Sea of Galilee that Jesus walks on water. It is at the Sea of Galilee that he invites Peter, James, Andrew, and John to become his disciples. It is at the Sea of Galilee that Jesus comes, the storms, and invites Peter to come and follow him and walk on the water. My brothers and sisters, Jesus picked the lowest point in the lowest fresh water lake in the whole of the earth to do his ministry. When Simon was at the edge of the sea and had given up as a result of fishing the whole night, Jesus decides to visit and interrupt him. Wait a minute. Two boats on the edge of the water Two boats left behind and fishermen washing their nets to hang them up. That sounds like a familiar story from the book of Psalms 137 verses 1. The Bible says that by the rivers of Babylon, the children of Israel sat down and wept when they remembered Zion hung their harps upon the willows and sang and said, How shall we sing the song of the Lord in a strange land? They lamented and were holding a pity party at that time. They had decided to hang their harps and everything. Is there a vessel? that has been hung out to dry because it has not caught a, a fish the whole night? Is there a skill that is no longer in use because you deem it unprofitable? Is there a guitar that is no longer being played or sharpened or tuned? It needs to be unhung and cleaned for God's use. The Bible says that they were washing their nets and their boats were at the edge ready to go back home. I want to let you know that many times God finds us at the age of giving up, at the age of losing hope, at our weakest and lowest points is when God desires to do his greatest work amongst us. Just when you are about to walk away from that job at a time when you are thinking of walking out of that marriage, just when you are about to quit in waiting upon God and just when you say, I am quitting prayer, God says it is not yet over. Relaunch into the deep. You know, today some people have not just about to give up. They are not about to give up. They have already given up. They have lost their hope and now Jesus is asking you and me to pull away from the shore and launch into the deep, relaunch and trust God for your marriage to work. He says relaunch into the deep and trust God for your job. Relaunch into the deep and trust God for your healing. Relaunch and trust God for a big catch. Children of God, it is time for us to relaunch our trust in God and trust God for the salvation of our spouses, our children. We need to relaunch and trust God for a new beginning. God says relaunch your boat into the deep and allow God to do miracles, signs, and wonders. Peter said, Lord, I have tried everything I know too. I am professional and you are just a preacher. I have been fishing all night and I have caught nothing. Now, what makes you think if I have been fishing all night and caught nothing, I will be able to catch something during the day? He gave him a reason for not launching back into the deep. I want to remind you that these fishermen were not amateurs. They knew the business. They were professionals. They had known the Sea of Galilee from childhood. 
They knew all about its moves. They knew all about its waves. They knew all about the dangers of the Sea of Galilee and how turbulent it was. But they also knew about its possibilities. They were good and they were on top of their game. But nevertheless... Peter says at thy word, nevertheless, against all the contradictions, against the setbacks, against the failures, against realizing that they had fished all night, Peter decides to launch out into the deep, trusting in the word that God had given to him. And I want to encourage you today. Will you launch out and trust God? Will you launch out against your setbacks and failures and turbulences and uncertainties and allow God to direct your footsteps like he did for Peter and his friends who were fishing at that time? Think about this, my brothers and sisters. How often do you see talented people go out on the sea and come back empty-handed with an empty boat? I am talking about gifted people, intelligent people. I am talking about people who know everything. They are very educated. They are very skilled. I know a number of business people who are very skilled. They go out there and work hard and their businesses never grow. Peter says, yet at thy word, I will launch out. I want to say that if you have a full and obedient heart, an empty boat is not a problem. If you are an obedient person, if you are obedient to the word of God, somehow God will find a way of fixing your empty boat. Somehow God will make a way for you where seems to be no way at the edge of your life. When things seem not to be moving, if you can say, Lord, at your word, if you can surrender to his way and your will, God will make a way where seems to be no way. That's why the Bible says that weeping may endure for a season, for a time, but joy comes in the morning. Peter and their friends did not realize at that time that they were experiencing failure. Failure was not because of the empty boat. Failure was not because they had spent the whole night fishing and caught nothing, but failure was found in their hopelessness. Failure was found in the statement, Lord, we have toiled Every time we have toiled every night, we've toiled the whole night. Failure was in their indifference. Failure was in their desperation. And I want to let us know, my brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. Life may have pushed you on the edge of the sea, but don't lose hope. Life may have oppressed you and messed with you, but don't allow it to take away your hope. Our hope is found in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his blood and righteousness. We dare not Trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly want us to trust in Jesus' name. I know you have been through storms and waves and uncertainties of the day, but hold on to your hope. Hold on to Christ Jesus because he knows what you are going through. Nothing can crush someone like discouragement. Discouragement steals the joy from your heart. It snatches the spring from your steps. It takes the smile from your face. It removes the sparkle from your eyes. Discouragement blows out the candle of expectancy. It quenches the fire. It is a forerunner of defeat. And therefore, I want to encourage you to hope in the Lord and not be discouraged. 
Discouragement causes believers and Christians and people worldwide to pray the wrong prayers. Ask Moses at the time of his discouragement in Numbers chapter 11 verses 5. He prayed that he would die. Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, he also prays that God should kill him. Job took it a notch higher when he says that I get discouraged. I wish if I had not been born. Many times our next blessings often happen at the places of our greatest frustration. And suddenly the scene in Luke chapter 5 is a place of discouragement for Peter and his friends. Luke chapter 5 is a scene that proves that the eyes of the Lord are on you. The eyes of the Lord are on you. Verses 2, the Bible says that he saw at the water's edge, two boats. Jesus amidst his preaching, amidst people crowding over to him and pushing towards him. He saw the two boats. He saw the fishermen washing their nets, ready to retire. He noticed that these fishermen had had a very long and bad night because they had caught nothing. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that amidst the chaos, Amidst the uncertainties created by the world news, amidst your failing health, amidst the wreckages that you go through, Jesus sees a life on the edge. His eyes are on the sparrow. His eyes are on the vulnerable. His eyes are on the needs of his people. Have faith and remember that the eyes of the Lord are on you. He says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. That the eyes of the Lord move to and fro all over the world seeking him whose heart is perfectly committed to God. The eyes of the Lord in Luke chapter 5 are on men and women who are on the edge. Luke chapter 5 is a call for our lives to launch into the deep. The Bible says that he let down his nets as soon as he had a command from the Lord. And as soon as the nets hit the ground, that God who is God beneath the waters and God above the waters, that God who is God in heaven and God on earth, that God, the all-knowing God, the all-powerful God, the all-present help made a miracle. As soon as Peter launched into the deep. The Bible says that his nets were filled with fish that they began to crack. He called his neighbors and told them, come and help me. Church, we must stop limiting God. I believe that God can still reach out to this country. I believe that God can still turn around our lives. I believe that God can still do miracles, signs, and wonders. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 8, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We need to put out our nets. We need to push out our boats. We need to follow what God has called us to do. And as we do that, as we cast our nets, as we build more churches, as we volunteer in the house of God, we will have a great catch. He just wants us to say, Lord, at thy word, this is our time. Don't put limitations on God. When we read the, uh, the book of Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to verse 7, we see Jesus speaking. The Bible says that after he had been preaching, he drew to Peter and said, launch out into the depth. He gave him a command. He spoke the word. Now, every time Jesus speaks, failure turns into success. When he speaks, despair turns into hope. Sorrow turns into joy. When Jesus speaks into your life, discouragement turns into courage. 
pessimism turn, turns into optimism. When Jesus speaks victory, comes your way. Your fears turn into bravery. Your feeble knees are strengthened and your lagging hands are lifted up on high. When he speaks, we ought to listen and say, nevertheless, at your word. I am talking about a God who still does miracles even up to today. A God who fed Elijah using ravens on a daily basis. I am talking about a God who led the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. They were able to put on and dress properly even when we did not have giant tiger and Walmart at that time. This is Jesus who feeds 5,000 people using five loaves of bread and, and fish. Let us stop limiting God, especially when he has given us a promise and he says that his promises are yes and amen. I dare to believe today how I pray that you will believe. Dare to believe that God can still provide. Dare to believe that God can still heal you. Dare to believe that God can still touch your family. Dare to believe today that God can still break that addiction from drugs. God can still save your family. He can still bring salvation to your kids. We are at a time when God calls us to relaunch our faith and believe in him without limitations because he's a God who loves us. He can still bless your business and cause it to grow. Many times I've asked myself why Jesus picked Peter. Why would Jesus pick Peter and his boat of all people? You know, in life, I have reasoned and said there are very many reasons why Jesus would not have chosen Peter. This guy called Peter was impulsive. He was a know-it-all. He was unstable. Actually, he was violent. This is a guy who had the capacity to get a sword and cut off someone's ears. Even at that time, if you're choosing someone to partner with, someone to work with, you don't choose Peter. He was abusive. How do you cut off someone's ear? But you know, humanly speaking, at times, I think that when a time like that, when there was no Facebook, no Twitter, no Telegram, no Instagram, probably Jesus chose him because he was the guy who was at the edge and had a boat. But listen to this. He's not just chosen because he had a boat. He's chosen because this is a, a scripture. It is a passage that shows us how divine partnerships work. God partnering with his creation to create a transformation and create an environment of people to follow him. Jesus wanted a boat and Peter had a boat he wanted a partnership. You know, Jesus needs you. He needs your boat. He needs to walk through your weaknesses and challenges. Jesus is looking for a people from different backgrounds, from different nations, from different color, from different ethnicities to be able to create a family. And, you know, he calls us to partner together with him. He wants to use your boat. He wants to use your skill. He wants to use your, your, your nets. He wants a partnership. There is always a partnership between God and his creation. That partnership requires a determination to follow God. It requires a participation from you and it requires a cooperation in your life. Peter decided that he was going to partner with Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. And this day I want to let us know that God wants to partner with entrepreneurs, with the unemployed, with the retired, with the weak, with the strong, with those who are abused. He says, come as you are, bring your boat, bring your life, bring your skills, bring your resources. I want to work through you. 
There is a call to a divine partnership. I have gone, my brothers and sisters, from thinking that Jesus needed Peter's boat to realizing that Peter needed the blessing of Jesus on his boat. I have moved from realizing that maybe Jesus needed a boat, but Jesus had the capacity to walk on water. He didn't need that boat, but Peter needed that partnership, that blessing on his boat to be able to get a full catch. It is a cool thing, my brothers and sisters, when you partner with the one who knows the best fishing sports. It is a cool thing when you partner with the Son of God on your board. It is a cool thing when you have the Son of God in your life, in your business, in your boats, in your skills. It is good to have Jesus on your board. It is a great thing when you say, God, all I have is yours. What Peter did was to hand over what he had. And in times like these, God is looking for a people. God is looking for Christians. God is looking for men and women who will hand over and surrender and say, Lord, all I have is yours. And you will never know what God wants to do with your life until you let him on your boat. You may never know what God wants to do with your business and skill until you let him on that boat. Faith at times is not easy. Faith at times is when you don't see it working, is when you don't feel it, but still say, at thy word. The greatest goal of your life is not the fish. The greatest goal is not going out fishing. But it is your ability to fish in times that are hard. It is your ability to fish in times that are troublesome. It is your ability to say, nevertheless, at your word, I will launch into the deep. Finally, Jesus had something different in mind for them. He had something different for them that they did not understand. It was not about them fishing ordinary fish. The success did not come from Peter and the other fishermen in, in, in fishing fish. The success was going to come when he told them that I am calling you to be fishers of men, to be a people who will transform lives of other people, to be Christ's ambassadors, impacting generations for life. That was the point of success. You know, your thoughts are not God's thoughts. Your plans can never be the plans of God. All I pray and ask today is that you can say nevertheless at your word because God wants to transform your life from just being fishermen, from being fishers of fish to being fishers of men, to being channels of his blessing, to being channels of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is extending an invitation for you today that as you live your life, as you walk along your life, why don't you invite him in your life and allow him in the boat of your life and allow him to take you from the edge of your hopelessness and take you into the depth where his presence leads you on, where there is a great catch, where there are no limitations of limiting what God can do in your life. If you're watching us today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord, and personal savior, I want to encourage you to reach out to us, send us an email, send us a message on Facebook or Twitter and get to us. We will reach out to you. We will help you on this journey as you walk with God. You don't have to journey alone in this present life. May God bless you as you relaunch your life in the deep by trusting God like never before, by raising your 
faith in times of uncertainty and calling on God to move your heart and surrendering to him and saying, Lord, all that I have is yours. May God bless you. May God be with you and may God make his face to shine upon you. We love you and we will be praying for you. Let's do something together. Life is better in community. So let me encourage you to reach out to us via the Connect card that you'll see in the description at the bottom of this video. That's your opportunity to just say hi. Let us know you're watching. Let us know how we can be praying for you. Or maybe you have some questions about faith, about our church, um, or about life in general. We're here to help you and we're happy to do so. I'd also like to thank those who are faithfully giving. I can't express my thanks enough. We're able to continue ministry in our community and abroad um, so wonderfully because of your faithfulness of giving the Lord's tithes and your offerings. So to go above and beyond his tithes is just incredible. And so for those of you who uh, want to come and visit us, please know that our service is a gift to you. We never ask for anything uh, as, from our guests. As a Christian, it is my act of worship to give to the Lord. And each one of us Christians uh, believe that. So if you want to come check us out, there's no pressure. Just come on over. Uh, if you did want to give, we have simple ways. Give at regalchurch.com for your e-transfer, no password required. You can drop it in the offering plate on Sundays, or you can drop through the to the office um, through the week. Just pop in, say hello, and uh, let us know who you are, and uh, we'd be happy to chat with you. Uh, we can also set up automatic deposit. We'll just send you the simple form, and you fill it out and send it back, and it's good to go. So thanks for your time, and God bless you. Thank you.